Hello, welcome to PlayStation Access and our look at the top 10 best platformers on PS4. As always, these games are in no particular order and we've kept to one entry per series, although not as always. We figured that since Rosie is the undisputed Access Queen of platformers, she should be the one to take you through at least half of this list. Take it away, Your Majesty. Steal thy shovel! It's time for a game which completely blew us away when we first played it, Shovel Knight. A 2D platformer which has been influenced by many other excellent games of this genre, where you are a knight who uses a shovel who is on a quest to save his partner, Shield Knight, after her disappearance at the Tower of Fate. Throughout your adventure, you will encounter a variety of beautiful areas, each one brilliantly designed to give you a good challenge, a bunch of menacing villains, all of them being charming and lovable in their own way, but don't misunderstand me, they still pack one hell of a punch, and a load of fun little challenges on the side, from platforming challenges to obtain treasures, to a fun little mini game where you hit potion bottles at targets. And if you want to up your game, you can even destroy your checkpoints for more treasure! Just make sure you don't die after this. And you do all of this whilst listening to a phenomenal soundtrack. I listen to it on a regular basis, and each time it makes me dance like this lady. But not only can you do this as Shovey, there are three other characters you can play as too, each adding something new to the gameplay and each being incredibly fun to play as. Ever had that thing where you rediscover a favourite food you haven't had since you were a child, eat it, and all it tastes of is disappointment? Now reimagine that scenario and inexplicably the food tastes even better than you remember, and you're some way to understanding how we felt the first time we booted up Spyro Reignited Trilogy on PS4. Oh, what a game! A joyful breath of breezy freedom that, let's not forget, was pretty revolutionary when the original first hit PS1. Whereas most platformers funnel you through a parade of obstacles, enemies and collectibles, Spyro lets you take it at your own pace. You're given the chance to explore, and my favourite thing, especially in the first game of the trilogy, is puzzling out how to reach those tantalising platforms that seem impossible at first glance, but then, through a combination of skill and aerial acrobatics, you nail a quadruple super charge glide combo and fizz your way to that elusive last treasure chest. That was quite a ride, Spyro. You learned a lot since you were a young glider. Yeah, well, you could have found an easier spot to get stuck. I don't think I've ever had so much fun collecting things as I have in Spyro. Dragons, gems, the scorched backsides of those cheeky buggers in the Peacekeeper's homeworld. And that's without even mentioning Spyro 2 and 3, a pair of sequels that expand, innovate and elevate the platforming to new heights. As a package, the reignited trilogy is incredible and will have you smiling from start to finish. With the possible exception of those flying levels, but we don't need to talk about those. Next up is Rayman Legends, the mad and gorgeously animated Ubisoft platformer. When you start getting a feel for the game, it feels fantastic to sprint through the stages, timing every jump and attack perfectly to ensure you don't slow down your momentum. Especially on the stages when you're being chased by something, because ooh wee, these can be exhilarating. And even some of your attacks encourage you to keep on going, such as these spinny ones, which don't really feel the same unless you chain it in with a good sprint. But there is more to this game than just fast-paced platforming. There are also inventive puzzles, which incorporate your cognitive skills as well as your platforming skills, hidden areas which always feel so rewarding when you find them. Oh, game, stop it! You're, stop it, you're embarrassing me! A fun football game you can play with your friends, and even rhythm game segments, which not only feel amazing to play, but the songs get stuck in your head and you just simply can't get them out. <laughs> This game is simply a joy to play, look at and listen to thanks to its beautiful soundtrack. And if someone else sees you playing it and they want to go, you can play with up to four players, so you can all have a wonderful time with this game together. Yeah. 
Ratchet and Clank. They are simply platforming royalty, no other way to describe them, and this PS4 outing, simply titled Ratchet and Clank, cements their place at the top. It looks ludicrously pretty. Seriously, if you're lucky enough to own a PS4 Pro and a 4K TV, get this running on it. It'll be like you've booked your eyeballs in for an all-day luxury spa, sauna, foot massages, the works. I don't know how you give your eyes a foot massage. Plus, this game is funny. Captain Quark honestly feels like something lifted right out of a, yes, here it comes, a Pixar movie. It's a comparison we've made pretty much every time we've talked about Ratchet and Clank, but the quality on offer here is such that it's kind of inevitable to get across just how polished and tight and varied this game is. You have to compare it to the best, and I'm going to leave you with a little montage of Mr. Zircon, because he is the best weapon I've ever used in any game ever. Don't at me. Mr. Zircon will punch you in the face with bullet. Do you remember Mr. Zircon? Death is too stupid for Mr. Zircon. Ah, there's nothing like a screaming cortex to start an entry, is there? Of course we couldn't do a feature on our favourite platformers without mentioning this crazy marsupial. And for those of you who don't know who he is... It's Crash Bandicoot! Crash Bandicoot has been around for years, but today we're referring to the 2017 remake of the original trilogy, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. What a remake this is! Being incredibly loyal to the originals whilst turning newcomers into fans. These games are packed with unforgettable levels and moments, such as using a jetpack, riding a polar bear, a tiger, using an engine powered surfboard, being chased by a dinosaur, a boulder, another polar bear, but this one's much bigger and more angry, opening an Aku Aku mask box and hearing. Hearing Cortex say. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you always muck in my mud? And simply doing the same bits over and over again, as you can't seem to get the timing of the jump right at all. Oh, crash, I've seen you die so much now, it's engraved in my mind. But honestly, this is a superb collection of games, filled with levels which will make you smile from ear to ear while slowly easing you into the fun challenges ahead. And hard ones. Some of them are definitely hard. And if you've never experienced them, I highly recommend it. Even if it's just for this laugh, as this laugh is perfect. <laughs> Our next game is Celeste, a challenging test of skill and reactions that manages to be both pleasingly old school and wonderfully newfangled at the same time. Like those smug literary types, it's our job to inform you that Celeste is the name of the setting, Celeste Mountain, not our heroine, Madeline, who decides to climb that mountain. The game's look and the climbing itself are the old school bit. This is pure, uncompromising platforming demanding precision, puzzling out routes, and a constant juggling of the game's inventive drip-fed mechanics. Meanwhile, Madeline herself represents the new fangled bit with her story about loneliness, insecurity, and openness about her mental health struggles. Also marking a difference from cold-hearted platformers of old is the game's assist mode, which can ease the game's difficulty with things like extra dashes, unlimited stamina, or a shift of game speed, and also an enables you to skip whole levels altogether, the philosophy being Celeste is a rewardingly tough game for those who'd like it to be, and an accessible one for all who'd like to try it. And you definitely should. Astrobot Rescue Mission Oh, this game. Now, we are aware that this is a PSVR exclusive, but it's just so good we simply couldn't leave it out of this video. It takes the definition of a platformer and raises the bar to 100. First of all, it puts you in the world. Literally. You are a robot controlling Astrobot with the DualShock and you follow him around as he moves. But the levels are designed in a way that you have to look around to navigate. Astrobot could be to the right of you, and if you don't move your head in that direction, he could die as you don't know where he's going. Which no one wants, because look at him. 
You will be looking up, down, left, right, and behind you. You don't need to look behind you, but you can, so you bet I'm going to do it. You will also be headbutting obstacles, have your sight obscured by goo, and blow things away, which blew my mind when I first did this. But not only is the PSVR headset used to its full potential, but also the DualShock itself. There are a ton of toys you can attach to it in the game. A catapult, a water pistol, a shuriken shooter. Oh, there are so many things. This game is a necessity for PSVR, the PS4 in general, platformer lovers, and people who are curious about them. In fact, it's so good that I can't take my PSVR headset off as I'm just waiting to play it again. I love this game that much. Morning, Dave. Morning, Rob. All right. Morning. Yeah. Ready for another exciting day of work. Oh, yes. Morning, guys. Morning, Dave. Morning, Dave. You all right? Mm. Morning, Rosie. Morning, Rosie. Rosie. Oh, Rosie. Not again. Why are you what? wearing a PSVR headset? We've talked about this, Rosie. Well, no, but you don't understand. I've, I've got to save the robots. I'm on a rescue mission. Rosie. I can't save robots unless I'm rescuing them. You're on a work mission. Pop-up books are tiny miracles of engineering, usually carefully folded paper and magic to conjure whole worlds from the tiny space between pages. Tearaway Unfolded, which naturally comes from dreams and little big planet creators media molecule, is like this same miracle worked on the whole genre of platforming, a game built from paper craft and joyous creation, bursting with life and energy. You play as a tiny messenger on your way to deliver a letter to a portal in the sky, tear away matching its hand-folded visuals with wonderfully creative gameplay and a warming soundtrack that just make the whole thing outrageously wholesome. There are even paper craft designs so you can make characters from the game yourself, like this cute little squirrel that Dave is putting together. Oh god, oh my god, what is th Sonic Mania is called Sonic Mania for a reason. It's maniacally good. It turns you into a maniac in a good way. Uh, these puns don't fully work, but I'm keeping them in anyway. Filled with life, colour and, most importantly, speed. You've got to go fast after all. Yourself and Sonic will be zooming through each joyous level, bobbing your head to the banging soundtrack, grinning as you think, classic Sonic is back, baby! And keeping your eyes to the right of the screen, so you know which one of Eggman's robots is going to be- No, my rings! Sonic Mania is filled to the brim with love for the Sonic franchise, including nods to the previous games and some classic levels making a comeback with new jazzy twists. But it also refreshes everything we know about 2D Sonic, such as having completely new areas to explore and touching up Sonic's appearance. If you're someone who's never been able to let go of the original Sonic, then they have finally made a game for you. It's no exaggeration to say this is a video full of PlayStation icons. Crash Bandicoot over there doing his thing. Hello, Crash. Spyro torching some innocent bunny rabbits over here. And then we come to our final entry, Little Big Planet 3, a game that cements leading star Sackboy's place in the PlayStation Hall of Fame. Little Big Planet 3 just went for it, an explosion of joy and colour and wool that handed creators more freedom than ever before. Three new playable characters embodied this new liberation. You've got Odd Sock, who can run much faster than Sackboy and also Wool Jump, Swoop, who can fly, and Toggle, who can pop between tiny and massive faster than a method actor who's just been cast in a superhero movie. Chuck in the fact you can now jump between 16 layers of 2.5D space, and levels can be more complex and wonderful than ever before. Look at Rosie, thinking of all the end endless possibilities that gives her, and then look what she's made anyway. <coughs> it's still many orders of magnitude better than anything I could make. Bottom line, Little Big Planet 3 is just happiness on a disc. Or a download, obviously, but that doesn't quite work as well as a sentence. So there you go, our picks for the top 10 platformers on PS4. Let us know if you agree with our choices, and if you don't, what games should have made the cut? Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and click that notification bell so you're always up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation. Thanks for watching. For the players.